Hello there, and welcome to another episode of Daily Magic. My name is Slytherin Knight, and I am so happy you could join me. So, today's new daily quest is to cast 20 blue or black spells, but in the vein of working on this one as well, what we had started but didn't finish in the last episode, we're going to be doing a mono black deck. Now, this deck is new. One I put together using some newer cards. Um, it functions essentially as an aggro deck, but there is a, a small mechanic within it. Mainly, there's a bit of a sacrifice mechanic in it. Um, one of the main cards we're using is Spiteful Hexmage, which when it when it's played into when it's put onto the field, you know, it creates a cursed roll. If it's the only thing on it, then it gets then it gets cursed. Or you can apply it to something else, and it goes in as a one cost three two, which is really nice. But yeah, a big part of the sacrifice mechanic I was talking about is actually Braids, a risen nightmare. At the beginning of your instep, you may sacrifice an artifact, creature, enchantment, land, or planeswalker. If you do, each opponent may sacrifice a permanent that shares a card type with it. If the opponent doesn't, they lose two lives and you draw a card. So, very nice. That's actually where like some of this stuff comes in. Like, braids is used specifically to get rid of our cursed um, enchantments. Even our Hopeless Nightmare, because once Hopeless Nightmare is played, it doesn't really serve that much of a purpose. So that's another enchantment that gets to go away. So it's, an, it's a really easy way of getting rid of enchantments, or an opponent may have. And if they don't have any, then that's just a, hit, a two hit and a draw for us, which combines nicely with Shieldred. But anyway, we are playing with a card that I don't particularly care for, but I want to give it a shot. I've actually never used it, I just don't like the loss mechanic on it. But Archfiend of, Archfiend of the Dross could be interesting. It's a flying, two cost, or a two any color, two black, six, six. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, it's four oil counters. And at the beginning of your upkeep, remove an oil counter. Uh, when there are no oil counters on it to remove, you lose. But whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, the, its controller loses two life. Now, of course, it shouldn't be that hard to win with this, with everything else we have going on. If I find that we start losing because of this card, which never seems to be an issue, uh, we'll get rid of it. But Braids also does come in with that. If like it's getting if it's getting close and we don't think we can win in the next turn or two, sacrifice it if we have Braids on the field as well. And then that's our opponent getting rid, either losing some life or having to sacrifice a creature. But anyway, everything else is pretty standard. Though one of the other new cards was Lord Skitter's Blessing. I just think this works well adding a wicked blessing or a wicked roll which can again get rid of a cursed roll or or whatever it's a tied to if we end up getting rid of the wicked roll with braids our opponent immediately loses one life which is nice but yeah that's pretty much it i have obviously i have no idea how this deck is going to perform um, i put this together right before starting to record so yeah the reason there's no real epitaph, because I don't know what to call this deck. Maybe a mono black pseudo sacrifice? I don't know. But as of, as of right now, it's just mono black, so we don't confuse it with mono black aggro. But anyway, let's go ahead and give it a shot. Um, I'm hoping it I'm hoping it runs well, but we'll see. That name is mildly disturbing. Okay, I actually... I kind of like this. We have some early removal, which is nice. Huh, <laughs> which we will be using immediately. Safety? Interesting choice. Okay. 
Can't say I've ever seen someone use this car, but okay. Oh, nice. Got rid of a lay on it. So, so far you can kind of see the idea behind the deck, at least. being destroyed if you decide to block. Either they have to take it, so they have to decide to take the damage. Um, put both of those to the back. Oh, another brave. Nice. Oh, that'll... comes in handy that we have another one. Okay, let's go here, apply it to itself. Start, they're gonna start roping just because of this. Hmm. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. Okay. Well, it looks like we're in for a waiting game, potentially. So far, just thinking about it, one thing I would change about this deck is actually adding in more uh, braids. I only have two in the deck, and that's because I only had two copies of it, but it's a rare, and I don't have a whole lot of rare wild cards. So that is one thing I would change, is adding adding in more braids. Because so far, yeah, the braid is kind of the main strategy of this. Have it in there and sacrificing things like, in, like enchantments that our opponent either won't have or may not be willing to get rid of. So that's two damage and a, and a draw for us. So I guess this would constitute a rage quit.
Kind of seems like it, doesn't it? If they decide to do something within like the last few seconds, I'm not going to be happy. That that'll annoy me. <laughs> you run into them occasionally. Every now and again, you'll run into someone who's going to rage quit. So we're just going to sit here and wait. I'm going to say yes. We're just going to sit here and wait. <laughs> so that at least tells me that if we can get if we can get braids out um, this deck will work pretty well. If if the first match we run into is a Rage Quitter, you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> so not too bad. Though I will say, we had a fairly good opening hand, and our draw draws from that point on were pretty decent. So that did, that did help a lot, to be completely honest. Alright, there we go. Like, uh, I've said it once, I'll say it twice. You know, if my opponent decides to rope out, I'm not going to give them the satisfaction of conceding so they can win. No, we're not doing that. I'm going to win. Like, if you're going to hand me the victory, I'm going to take it. But anyway. Let's go for another match. See if we can uh, repeat what we, just, what we just did. That'd be cool. So as things go, we may actually wrap this episode up when we finish off the um, the 30, if by some chance we don't finish them both off at the same time. We'll see. Like I said, we'll see. Alright. Let's have a good match. Hopefully better than that last one. I know there's a good, uh, yeah, there's a good white-black enchantment stack that uses, that uses, um, uses this. Oh man, wrong one. That, that's my bad. <laughs> no, that was my bad. Well, actually, no, that's still, no, that works, because this will be a 3-2 when it's, when it's ready next turn. And then I can send out braids next to, to get rid of it. And they concede. Okay. Not sure why they decided to concede, but we'll take the victory. <laughs> All right. Um, by the looks of this, we should be able to complete them at the same time. We need seven more here and eight more here. I'm not. I'm not going to play. I'm not going to tempt Murphy's Law by saying what are the chances, but we'll see. <laughs> Shiontalia? Is that how you would say that? Shiontalia? I like I like this so far. I like our um like what we're getting. to get rid of it immediately. Um, okay. Target creature opponent controls the land value 2 or less. 
Chaos, which could be either of them. Let's see. So they're mana tapped. Don't really have anything to use you with, though, is the thing. Let's go with this. Yeah, I don't really have anything for braids to um, work with, because I don't want to get rid of my underdog. Ah, I need to get some enchantment removal. Okay. Listen to that one. Okay. Yeah, nothing to apply. We could roll two so that it gets burned. chances of victory just kind of went downhill with that, with that uh, plant blocker there, but not much I can really do about it, to be honest. Yeah, just negated my attack, which is fine. That could... That could be useful. Set up though, which is not great. Yeah, yeah, no, they've they have us here, I would say. Yeah, they have a wicked roll there, which they can get rid of. They'll deal damage. They've got us easy, but... And I guess this is kind of the one I was talking about. It's a, um, well, not not really. The one the one I think of doesn't have Elsa Beth in it. Man, they're going for a full kill, aren't they? But anyway. Well played. Well played. Interesting deck. I haven't seen that before. That's unique. That 
uh, for what I've seen at least, fairly unique. All right, where does that put us? Hey, okay, we completed both, very nice. And as we can see, we leveled up. One of the things we got was a card style for Vantress Transmuter. Um, its adventure ability is tap target creature, create a cursed roll token attached to it. That's not bad. And then other than that, it is a three any color, one blue, three, four. Okay. Got a pact open and a mastery orb to claim. Very nice. Did we get anything else? I don't think so. No, no, that's it. Our next things will be Ogre Chitter Lord. That's interesting. And another Mastery Orb. Anyway, uh, we were working through blue. Yeah, we were working through blue, so let's get our next one. Splashy Spellcaster. Art style for it. That's cool. It's a funny name. All right, what are you? You are a three any color, one blue elemental wizard. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a sorcerer roll at token attached to up to one other target creature you control and a sorcery token is change a creature is plus one plus one and has whenever this creature attacks scry one that's not that's not terrible that's not terrible anyway i don't know if i actually have that card in my um collection but we have its card style now so that's pretty cool but anyway let's open up this pack to wrap things up nothing too interesting, but oh, hey, look, we do have a spe splashy spellcaster. That is funny. I find that very funny. We got its card style, and we have a card and confirmation that it's already in our deck. So it's a common or an uncommon. Cool. Two rares. First one, extraordinary journey. Uh, da -da -da -da. Enters the battlefield exile like up to X target creatures for each of those cards. Its owner may play it for as long as it remains exiled. Okay. One or more non-token creatures into the battlefield. If one or more of them entered the back front of exile or was cast from exile, you draw a card. Eh, that doesn't seem that great, but okay. And then a, um, a natural growth. Whew, that's really cool. At the beginning of each combat, double the power and toughness of each creature you control until the end of turn. That is, whew. I mean, yeah, it's a... It costs, you know, four, four green and one any color, but still, whew, glad that's an historic. <laughs> but anyway, as I was saying, we're going to wrap things up here. I think the deck uh, performed fairly well. Um, out of our three matches, two wins, two wins, one loss. And that, and that loss was against a very, what I'll call an interesting deck. And that win was, that second win was also, oh, what, three turns deep? <laughs> anyway, win's a win. But yeah, as I was saying, if you enjoyed this episode, which I do sincerely hope you did, please consider hitting that thumbs up button down below and subscribe to the channel if you're new to stay up to date for whenever new content is posted. And do not hesitate to let me know your thoughts about this episode and about the new deck in the comment section down below. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you all next time.